Hey everyone, it's Julie Murphy, and today I'm going to make a design in my design center, or IQ Designer if you're working on your baby lock, and it's going to be for a friend, and it's an ornament with their name. So let's get started. So here we are in Design Center, and the first thing I'm going to do is open one of the shapes, and here is our Shapes tab right here. And for this ornament, I these are all closed shapes, but I want to go to this tab, which is even more closed shapes. And for this, I want to choose this design right here. You can choose a different design if you'd like, but for this video, we're just going to use this one. And say OK. And that's not really the design that I'm looking for, so let's make some adjustments. First thing, as long as the red box is around the shape, we can adjust its size. We can also make adjustments by rotating it. So first thing I want to do is rotate it until I'm about 315 degrees. And you'll see the degrees change up here. So we're almost there. And so I was doing it by 10 degrees each time. And now I'm just going to do it by one degree. And what I'm looking for as I do this, let me zoom in and show you, is I'm looking for the red box to touch on each side. All right, so we've got it in the, at the angle that we're looking for, so we'll answer OK. And now I'm going to adjust the size. You'll see that it's six and a half by six and a half inches. And I'm going to just use, this one makes it bigger, and this button makes it smaller. And I want to take it down to just under 4 inches, so about 3.75. There we go. So once we have it to the size we're looking for, we'll say OK. And the very next thing I want to do before I go any further is make sure I have the stitch of this outline set to a triple stitch. So I'll go, let me get back to that. This is our line property region, and this is our fill region. So right now, because we're just working with lines, we want to go into the line property area, and touch the notepad. We're going to ask it to do a triple stitch. And for the outline, just to keep it separate, I'm going to choose the black. And instead of a pencil, I'm going to choose the bucket, because it changed the line all at one time. And there you go. Did you hear the sound that it made as I did that? Let me let you hear what it sounds like if I've already made the change. Did you hear the difference? The next thing I would like to do is I want to add a little um, decorative area to kind of separate the top from the bottom. So we'll go back into our Shapes tab and Instead of either of the closed shapes this time, I'm going to go to an open shape. I think this is the one I would like to choose. So we'll say OK. And obviously it's a little too big for what we're trying to do. So first thing I would like to do is zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. And as long as the red box is around the scallop, we can go in and change the size. And for this one, I'm again going to decrease it. Now remember, we have a viewing window right here that allows us to see um, how our design looks and allows us to move um, the screen around as we're working. So let's go ahead and reduce this. Now see, there it is, and it would still be an open shape and would just be sitting on top of our design instead of what I'm looking to do is I want to touch it from side to side. So we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Let's move it up just a little bit. And you'll see right here, I don't know if you can see that, but it's still sticking out a little bit so we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And we're going to have to adjust it just a little bit because I've moved it away from this side over here. I'm 
let's zoom in and check it and make sure we've got it touching on both sides. It's touching here. And it's touching there. It's, it's really important that we get it to touch on both sides because what we're trying to do is we're going to separate these two areas and assign a fill color to each side. So we're going to answer OK. And now before we go any further, it's really important as we go along in this design, just in case we make a mistake and we want to actually start over, is to go ahead and choose this red arrow down here and what that does is it saves our design in the design center into the pocket. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll choose the pocket. So now if we have to come back we can actually start back from this point right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hang, uh, create the little uh, area up here at the top that's the metal that the hook would hang from on an ornament. So let's go back into shapes and let's go back into the open shapes and choose what we would like for that to look like. I think I'm going to actually choose this design and I'll say OK. And as we work with it, we want to move it away from this design down here. So as we create with it, um, we don't mess up our prior design or if we have to cut it and start over. First thing I need to do is erase the points that I don't want. So I'm going to choose the eraser and let's go with the medium eraser. And I'm going to zoom in up here and I have to change the design window so I can see what I'm doing. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit on the camera so you can see it as I work through it. Okay, so we're going to erase going up to this point here. Okay, and I'll move the design window. And I'm going to erase this tab here, down, and then the, what we're going to do is stop at the top of this peak. Okay, so now we've got those two points. Let me zoom the camera back out. Now, before we go any further, we can't really move this design on top of it. We can't move it until we select it. So the first thing we need to do is choose the selection tool, which is this box right here. And we'll draw a box around this. And the next thing we'd like to do is actually, before we move it, is go ahead and size it. And I want to make it smaller. Let me zoom in so you can see what we're doing. We've made it 0.57 by 0.86. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit easier. Again, what we're looking for is we want to make sure that our edges are touching the upper shape. I'm pretty happy with that. So let me zoom back out and show you what we need to do next. Obviously, I don't want this peak here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to answer OK. And I'm going to go in and select my eraser. And I'm going to still stick with the medium. Let me zoom the camera back in for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this peak off and there we have, let me zoom out so you can see, and there we have the lower portion of our points. Zoom back out. So now what we need to do is put the little top of the metal piece on. So we'll go back into our shapes. And let's see here. I think I would like to choose the rounded corners of this square. So I'll say OK. Let me zoom out so you can see what's happened. So there is the top of our ornament. And you can see it's obviously too big. So what we need to do is go into size. And we want to make it a lot smaller. 
you can see the size changing up here. And now that I've gotten it a little bit smaller, or a lot smaller, I'm going to move it above it. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what's going on. Let me zoom the machine in. So now what we're going to do is, before we go any further, I'm going to answer OK. And I'm going to take the eraser. I'm going to take off half of this square. So I'm going to start here. And there we go. We have half of our square sitting on the screen. At this point, let me zoom back out so you can see what's going on. At this point, if I left it like this, I can't actually move it to, um, down on top of where we've made the points. But what you'll remember is we have the selection box right here. So we can then draw a red box. And this is why we do it away from our design, because we want to be able to move it up and down. And as you can see, it's a little bigger. Can you see that? It's a little bigger than our actual. We're trying to get it to line up with these two peaks. So what I'd like to do is go back to our size button. So we'll choose our size button. Now remember, we can do this as long as this portion has the red box around it, which is our selection box. So we'll choose size, and we're going to make it a little all over. We're going to make it a little bit smaller. All right, I'm going to zoom the machine in so you can see. And now what we're going to do to just to check it is we're trying to get it to touch on both sides. And we can use our direction keys down here to make small adjustments. I think that looks pretty good. So we'll say OK. And we're going to zoom back out. So, so far we've used our outer shape, the scallop that we made smaller, we made the diamonds that we shrunk, and then the half of the square. We need to go back into our line property area so I'm going to stick with the triple stitch and I'm going to leave it all of it as black and we'll make sure that each of these because we had left it as a triple stitch they are all still exactly how we want them. The next thing we're going to do is go into our property region. We're going to choose the notepad. We're going to make sure we have selected the fill stitch. We have the red color already selected. We'll say OK. And the big thing here is instead of the paintbrush, we actually want to choose the bucket fill. Let me show you what happens. If we did the paintbrush, we would end up with something like this. And I'm not interested in doing that for this particular design. So we can use our undo button, this little backwards arrow that removes that. And we're going to change it from the paintbrush to the bucket fill in our property region. And there's our first fill stitch. The next thing I'd like to do is fill this upper area. So I'll go back into the notepad of the property region and I'm going to choose a white color. I'll say OK. Make sure the bucket in the property regions is selected. And then we'll touch inside this area our notepad. And this time I'm going to choose a silver color. I'll say OK. And again, our bucket is selected in our regions property. And then I'll touch this area right there. So that is the first portion of our ornament. The next thing I would like to do is I want to give it a hook that it's hanging from. So let's go back into our shapes. And this time I'm going to choose again from the open shapes. I think I would like to choose one of these swirls. So we'll say OK. And before we make any adjustments, we want to move it off of our design. 
and I would like to rotate it. And I think I'm going to try 90 degrees. So before we go any further with this, I would say OK. And I want to erase this lower portion. Let me zoom in so you can see this as we do it. Zoom back out. All right, well that, we've gotten the lower portion erased. The next thing I would think I would like to do is I'm gonna choose my selection tool. And I'm only, and that's, this is why we moved it away from our ornament. If we had it sitting on top of it, we couldn't reselect the swirl. So you kind of wanna work away from your design at, until you get all of your adjustments made. So the next thing I want to do is I want to change the size of it. And we can do that as long as we put the selection box around it. So we'll say size. And I want to make it smaller all over. That looks pretty good. Um, let's see. Make it a little bit narrower. That looks pretty good, so we'll say OK. The next thing I'd like to do is let's take it over a little bit towards our ornament. And I'm not going to touch the ornament yet because once I do that, it wants to join up and assign a different stitch. And for this one, I think I would like to assign it. Let's go back into our line property area. I'm going to go into the line property area and the notepad. And instead of the triple stitch, I think I would like to assign it a chain stitch. And because I want it to stitch separate from everything else, I'm going to give it a dark green color. Now remember, just because I'm assigning it a color doesn't mean I have to stitch in that color. And I'm going to choose the bucket in the line property area. And I'll touch. Now listen for the sound. Did you hear that? It made the little beep sound. Now watch what happens when I touch it again. That's letting you know that I've already assigned it that stitch that was in the notepad. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. The next thing we're gonna do is still make our selection box. And the reason is I'm now about ready to make it join up, but I don't like how it's kind of leaning over so I'm actually going to rotate it just a little bit. Let me go back so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna, as long as the selection box is around it, I can choose rotate down here. And I'm just gonna rotate it a few degrees. Okay. So now let's drag that over. Let's zoom in a little bit up here. And what we're looking for, see how it's below the area here? I want to just kind of make it touch. And let's zoom out and see how that looks. I like that. So once you're happy with the angle and the size, then once you say OK, it will be joined up and it'll be much more difficult to change at this point. So we'll say OK. And at this point, I think before I do the next thing, I'm going to save it into the pocket. And if we're happy with it, we can go on and go to the next screen. And as we go through this screen, let me zoom in so you can see what's going on. Do you see how the lines are moving around this silver area? Can you see that? So that is saying the information we here have at the bottom of the screen down here applies just to the silver area right here. And because these three areas are fill, I want to ensure that I turn the undersewing on. That just kind of helps stabilize our stitches as we go along. And we'll 
turn the under sewing on and hit set. I'm happy with the angle and everything else that's down here. But before I hit preview, I want to use these selection keys here and go, so right now we have the silver chosen. And now we, can you see how it's, the lines are moving around the white area? So that we also want to turn the under sewing on. So we'll go back down here and say on and set that. And then when I go to the next selection, the red, we can turn that under sewing on. Say on and set it. And now we can go through and preview. And we'll say okay. So here is our design. And if there are any changes at this point, before we hit set, we would want to return and make any changes at this point. But I'm very happy with it. And again, if I would like to save this design, so if I want to make other changes, I can save it into this pocket. And this saves it in the pocket in Design Center if we need to come back to it. So we'll hit Set, and we'll say OK. And now we're in our embroidery screen. And before I stitch it out, I would like to add the friend's name down here below the ornament. So I've already done the name in another program. I have a BES4 program, and I've sent it to my machine. So I'm going to say Add, and I'll go into, this is the pocket of things that I've already saved into my machine. And there is her name. And I will hit Set. I don't want it on top of my ornament, so I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm pretty happy with that. So now I have an 8.55 by 4 inches. Now remember, when you're working on a towel, you really want to stay under 5 inches because most hand towels, um, when you, by the time you fold them, are anywhere from 5.5 to 6 inches wide. And so 4 inches is a very good size for a hand towel. So if I'm happy with where I've placed the name, then I will say and the color. I want to make sure it's a different color over here uh, from everything else. So you can see we're going to start with our silver right here and then work into our white and then our red and then remember we signed the green, I believe it was the chain stitch. Then it's going to do our triple stitch and then it'll do the name. So I'm happy with everything so I'll hit embroidery and we are ready to stitch. Here we are over at our towel. I'm using a black towel with a piece of pressure sensitive sticky stabilizer. I've placed my snowman sticker where I would like the center of my design to be and I'll show you how we're going to use that in just a moment. I'm using a magnetic dime hoop and then in that hoop, let me just show you here, let me move the camera. What I've got is a piece of pressure sensitive stabilizer underneath or actually in the hoop that I've torn away this layer so my towel sticks to it. So let's go back to the screen and let me show you what we're going to do next. Here we are back at the screen and before we start embroidering, now remember I'm in the embroidery screen now, um, but before I hit embroidery on my machine I'm going to go into edit and I want to select the little snowman sticker and what that is going to do is it's going to search for my sticker that I have on my towel. And you can see where the design is in relation to this box. And what it's going to do, this is the center of the design, is it's going to place this center directly over top of where I have my snowman sticker. So I'll say OK. And you can see what it's going to look like. And now what the machine is going to do is hit, I'm going to hit scan the embroidery area is going to move over at my towel. I'll say OK. And it found, and you can see now how the actual design has moved, and it is now sitting, the machine is sitting right on top of my positioning sticker. So before I say okay, I'm going to go over to my towel and show you how 
the machine moved around. You see how now the foot is directly above and aligned with my positioning sticker. We have removed our positioning sticker and I will lower the presser foot and we will get started. There is our completed design. So now what we need to do, I'm gonna run it under water and remove the sticky stabilizer and I'll show it to you once I've gotten it all done and washed it off and gotten it all dry. There you go. That is our Christmas ornament towel that's all ready for a friend. Thanks for watching.